Haru và cuộc chiến với Yukiona, những bông tuyết vần vũ trên bầu trời, nó giống như bụi trắng như băng, hòa vào những tán cây đã phủ đầy tuyết từ đêm qua. Đó là thời điểm trong năm khi người phụ nữ tuyết Yukiona đến để đánh cắp những đứa trẻ từ ngôi nhà ấm áp của họ và ăn thịt chúng. Ở phía xa, Haru có thể nghe thấy tiếng khóc của những người phụ nữ trên khắp các con phố ở Chichibu, Nhật Bản. Miễn là Haru còn nhớ, Yukiona sẽ đưa một chàng trai và một cô gái đi ăn tiệc. Điều này sẽ xảy ra mỗi năm một lần vào đêm tuyết rơi đầu tiên. Haru mở Soji ra và đi dọc theo hành lang. Cậu có thể cảm thấy ấn lạnh sống lưng khi đến phòng khách tối ông nơi bố mẹ cậu đang ở. Anh nhìn quanh căn phòng và anh trai của anh, Jiro, không thấy đâu cả. Trước khi mẹ anh kịp thốt lên. Anh đã biết bà sẽ nói gì, anh ấy đi rồi. Mẹ anh vừa nói vừa bật khóc, Haru bắt đầu khóc và cậu có thể cảm thấy những giọt nước mắt lăn dài trên má mình, cậu biết rằng điều này sớm muộn gì cũng đến. Jiro mới 6 tuổi, một nạn nhân hoàn hảo của người phụ nữ tuyết, đừng lo lắng ca sang, tôi sẽ tìm thấy Jiro, tôi sẽ đưa anh ấy trở lại, Haru thề với cha mẹ mình. Haru đã đến nhà của Sonpa với hy vọng nhận được một điều may mắn, Sonpa. Haru gọi trước cửa của trưởng làng, Sonpa. Haru lại hét to hơn, lần này to hơn. Son ba đưa Haru vào nhà và trong khi nhâm nhi tách trà xanh, Haru giải thích toàn bộ câu chuyện và lời thề của mình với bố mẹ. Nghe xong, Son ba nhắm mắt lại như đang giao tiếp với các vị thần trên cao, một lúc sau. Anh ta mở mắt ra, lúc này sáng như vàng, và nói, bạn là người được chọn bởi thần chiến tranh Hachiman, bạn có phước lành để đánh bại Yukiona. Xuống chùa xuống sông, gặp cây đỏ, lúc đó sẽ biết phải làm thế nào, nhưng trước khi Haru rời đi, Son ba đã tặng cậu một trong những tài sản quý giá nhất của mình, thanh katana, cho Haru như một lời chúc phúc, khi Haru tới cái cây đỏ rực. Cậu chạm vào vỏ cây bằng tay không và cảm thấy một lực kéo, giống như cái cây đang kéo cậu vào đó. Anh cảm thấy chóng mặt, cố gắng nhắm mắt lại, anh cắm móng tay vào lòng bàn tay đẫm mồ hôi, ngăn mình chìm vào giấc ngủ, có vẻ như bạn là một người dũng cảm, bạn đã không ngủ như những người khác, một giọng nói vang lên, trong tích tắc. Haru được đưa vào một thế giới khác. Không có người, không có ai trong tầm mắt. Lớp tuyết dày trên mặt đất không còn dấu chân, Haru không biết phải đi đâu, làm gì, nhưng có một điều anh biết chắc chắn rằng anh cần phải giết Yukiona, anh nhìn xung quanh và thấy một nhà kho, nhưng Haru chưa kịp mở cửa nhà kho thì đã có một cơn gió mạnh ập tới, ah 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 ah, có vẻ như bạn đã tìm thấy tôi một đứa nhỏ, người phụ nữ tuyết nói với nụ cười xấu xa trên khuôn mặt. Không do dự, Haru rút thanh katana từ sau lưng ra, và vung nó lên không trung, nhắm vào Yukiona. Anh ta trượt một in, làm cho những người phụ nữ tuyết tức giận. Cô ấy vương cánh tay dài và móng tay dài ra. Cô ấy tung cánh tay của mình lên không trung, ngón tay móng tay dài cứa vào tấm sét bên trái của Haru để lại một vết sẹo khó quên. Chất lỏng màu đỏ chảy dài trên má anh, máu, nó từ từ nhúng xuống nền tuyết trắng. Nó tan chảy trong quá trình đó. Anh ta sẽ không lùi bước, với sự trợ giúp của sức mạnh Hachiman, anh ta vung kiếm một lần nữa, lần này là xuyên thẳng thanh kiếm dài của mình qua bụng của người phụ nữ tuyết, khiến cô ta chảy máu trên nền tuyết trắng, cuối cùng Haru cũng mở cửa chuồng và nhìn thấy hai đứa trẻ, một trai một gái, Jiro. Haru hét lên sung sướng khi ôm chặt lấy anh trai không muốn buông. Ba người họ rất phấn khích và vui mừng vì sau hàng trăm năm, Điều này cuối cùng đã kết thúc. Họ rất háo hức để cho mọi người trong làng biết về chiến thắng của họ. Nhưng họ không biết điều gì sẽ xảy ra, Haru đưa hai đứa trẻ trở về làng và mọi người đã reo hò, vui mừng khi biết tin này. Những tia sáng màu cam lấp lánh tỏa sáng khắp bầu trời và trẻ em giờ đây đã được an toàn trước sự đe dọa của người phụ nữ tuyết. Một bông tuyết bay từ trên trời xuống miệng Haru, nó có vị ngọt ngào. Cậu quay về với gia đình và họ vui vẻ đi bộ về nhà, an toàn và đoàn kết, vài năm nữa và Haru đã có gia đình riêng, những đứa con riêng và một mái ấm gia đình ấm cúng. Anh bây giờ đã khác, sau trận chiến với Yukiona, anh là một con người hoàng, rằng một ngày nào đó, cô ấy sẽ trở lại. Nhưng đôi khi, những cơn ác mộng trở thành hiện thực, mặc dù bề ngoài anh ấy có vẻ vui vẻ nhưng anh ấy biết điều gì sẽ xảy ra, chuyện gì thế em yêu. Vợ của Haru Ichika nói với giọng nhẹ nhàng đầy sức ép, không có gì đâu, lại chỉ là những cơn ác mộng khủng khiếp. Haru cúi mặt đáp lại, xấu hổ khi phải thừa nhận với vợ mình. 
cả hai người họ đều biết rằng nó không thực sự đơn giản, phổ biến, những cơn ác mộng giống nhau trong nhiều năm. Cả hai người họ đều biết điều gì sẽ xảy ra, vì vậy họ quyết định. Haru and the fight with Yukiana, snowflakes danced around in the sky, it was like ice white dust, blending in with the trees that were already covered in snow from last night. It was that time of year when Yukiana the snow woman came to steal children from their warm homes and eat them, in the distance, Haru could hear the piercing sounds of women crying throughout the streets of Chichibu, Japan. For as long as Haru remembered, Yukiana would take a boy and a girl to feast on. This would happen once every year on the night of the first snowfall, Haru slid open the shoji and made his way down the hallway, he could feel a chill run down his spine when he reached the dark living room where his parents were. He looked around the room and his brother, Jiro, was nowhere to be found. Before his mother could even utter a sound, he knew what she was going to say. He's gone, his mother managed to say while bursting out into tears. Haru began to cry, and he could feel the tears roll down his cheek. He knew that this was coming sooner or later. Jiro was only six, a perfect victim for the snow woman. Don't worry cousin, I'll find Jiro, I'll bring him back, Haru vowed to his parents, Haru made his way to Sonk 3's house in hopes to get a blessing. Sonk 3 Haru called out in front of the village leader's door, Sank 3. Haru yelled out again, louder this time. Sank 3 brought Haru into his house, and while sipping green tea, Haru explained the whole story and his vow to his parents. After listening, Sank 3 closed his eyes as if he was communicating with the gods above. After a while he opened his eyes, now glowing like gold, and said, You are the chosen one by Hachiman, god of war, you have his blessing to defeat Yukiana. Go to the temple, down the river, you will see a red tree, you will know what to do then. But before Haru left, Sank 3 gave him one of his most prized possessions, the oak katana, to Haru as a blessing. When Haru reached the red crimson tree, he touched the bark with his bare hands and felt a pull, like the tree was pulling him into it. He felt dizzy, fighting the urge to close his eyes, he dug his nails into his sweaty palms, stopping himself from falling asleep. Seems like you are a brave one, you didn't fall asleep like the other humans, echoed a voice, in a split second, Haru was brought into another world, there were no people, no one in sight. The thick snow on the ground betrayed no footprints. Haru didn't know where to go, or what to do, but one thing he knew for certain, was that he needed to kill Yukiana. He looked around and saw a shed, but before Haru could even open the shed's door, there was a strong gust of wind, ah ha ha, seems like you found me little one, the snow woman said with a wicked grin on her face. Without hesitation, Haru pulled out the oak katana from behind his back and swung it in the air, aiming for Yukiana. He missed by an inch, making the snow women furious. She stretched out her long arms and long fingernails. She threw her arms in the air, the long fingernails slashed Haru's left check, leaving an unforgettable scar. Red liquid ran down his cheek, blood, it dipped slowly onto the white snow, melting it in the process. He wasn't going to back down, with the help of Hachiman's power, he swung his sword again, this time piercing his long sword right through the snow woman's stomach, leaving her bleeding on the white snow. Haru finally opened the shed and saw two children. A boy and a girl, Jiro. Haru yelled in joy as he hugged his brother tightly, not wanting to let go, the three of them were excited and so glad that, after hundreds of years, this was finally going to end. They were eager to let the village people know about their victory. But little did they know what was going to happen, Haru brought the two children back to the village and everyone cheered and was delighted by the news. Glimmering rays of orange shined throughout the sky and children were now safe, without the threat of the snow woman. A snowflake flew from the sky into Haru's mouth, it tasted sweet, he turned back to his family and they walked happily back home, safe and united. A few more years later and Haru had his own family, his own children and a warm cozy home. He was different now, after the fight with Yukiana, he was a completely different person, he started having nightmares and horrible dreams, that one day, she will return. But sometimes, nightmares become reality, although he seemed happy on the outside he knew what was going to happen. What's wrong honey? Haru's wife, Ichika said in a conursing soft voice, it's nothing, just those horrible nightmares again. Haru replied, looking down, ashamed to admit to his wife. Both of them knew that it wasn't really that simple, common, the same nightmares for years? 
Both of them knew what was going to happen, so they desi. Haru and the fight with Yukiana, snowflakes danced around in the sky, it was like ice-white dust, blending in with the trees that were already covered in snow from last night. It was that time of year when Yukiana the snowwoman came to steal children from their warm homes and eat them, in the distance, Haru could hear the piercing sounds of women crying throughout the streets of Chichibu, Japan. For as long as Haru remembered, Yukiana would take a boy and a girl to feast on. This would happen once every year on the night of the first snowfall, Haru slid open the shoji and made his way down the hallway, he could feel a chill run down his spine when he reached the dark living room where his parents were. He looked around the room and his brother, Jiro, was nowhere to be found. Before his mother could even utter a sound, he knew what she was going to say. He's gone, his mother managed to say while bursting out into tears. Haru began to cry, and he could feel the tears roll down his cheek. He knew that this was coming sooner or later. Jiro was only six, a perfect victim for the snow woman. Don't worry cousin, I'll find Jiro, I'll bring him back, Haru vowed to his parents, Haru made his way to Sonk 3's house in hopes to get a blessing. Sonk 3 Haru called out in front of the village leader's door, Sank 3. Haru yelled out again, louder this time. Sank 3 brought Haru into his house and while sipping green tea, Haru explained the whole story and his vow to his parents. After listening, Sank 3 closed his eyes as if he was communicating with the gods above. After a while he opened his eyes, now glowing like gold, and said, You are the chosen one by Hachiman, god of war, you have his blessing to defeat Yukiana. Go to the temple, down the river, you will see a red tree, you will know what to do then. But before Haru left, Sank 3 gave him one of his most prized possessions, the oak katana, to Haru as a blessing. When Haru reached the red, Crimson tree, he touched the bark with his bare hands and felt a pull, like the tree was pulling him into it. He felt dizzy, fighting the urge to close his eyes, he dug his nails into his sweaty palms, stopping himself from falling asleep. Seems like you are a brave one, you didn't fall asleep like the other humans, echoed a voice, in a split second, Haru was brought into another world, there were no people, no one in sight. The thick snow on the ground betrayed no footprints. Haru didn't know where to go, or what to do, but one thing he knew for certain, was that he needed to kill Yukiana. He looked around and saw a shed, but before Haru could even open the shed's door, there was a strong gust of wind, ah ha ha, seems like you found me little one, the snow woman said with a wicked grin on her face, without hesitation, Haru pulled out the oak katana from behind his back, and swung it in the air, aiming for Yukiana. He missed by an inch, making the snow women furious. She stretched out her long arms and long fingernails. She threw her arms in the air, the long fingernails slashed Haru's left check, leaving an unforgettable scar. Red liquid ran down his cheek, blood, it dipped slowly onto the white snow, melting it in the process. He wasn't going to back down, with the help of Hachiman's power, he swung his sword again, this time piercing his long sword right through the snow woman's stomach, leaving her bleeding on the white snow. Haru finally opened the shed and saw two children. A boy and a girl, Jiro. Haru yelled in joy as he hugged his brother tightly, not wanting to let go, the three of them were excited and so glad that, after hundreds of years, this was finally going to end. They were eager to let the village people know about their victory. But little did they know what was going to happen, Haru brought the two children back to the village and everyone cheered and was delighted by the news. Glimmering rays of orange shined throughout the sky and children were now safe, without the threat of the snow woman. A snowflake flew from the sky into Haru's mouth, it tasted sweet, he turned back to his family and they walked happily back home, safe and united. A few more years later and Haru had his own family, his own children and a warm cozy home. He was different now, after the fight with Yukiana, he was a completely different person, he started having nightmares and horrible dreams, that one day, she will return. But sometimes, nightmares become reality, although he seemed happy on the outside he knew what was going to happen. What's wrong honey? Haru's wife, Ichika said in a conursing soft voice, it's nothing, just those horrible nightmares again. Haru replied, looking down, ashamed to admit to his wife, both of them knew that it wasn't really that simple, common, the same nightmares for years? Both of them knew what was going to happen, so they desi.